There comes a time in every EV startup's journey where all the hype and promises must stop and the product has to begin to talk. We seem to have finally reached that time with Bengaluru-based Simple Energy, who launched the Simple One scooter about a year ago, but we're finally getting to ride this highly anticipated electric scooter. As it turns out, the company only let us ride its scooter on a very short loop within a gated housing society outside Bengaluru. That means that we'll only be able to share a first impression of this scooter today, and a detailed road test will only be possible when Simple lets us ride its scooter on public roads. So it seems like today is going to be more of a preview than a review, but in one way that is a good thing because the scooters we have here today do not seem to be fully finished. Unfortunately, this has become the way of most EVs we ride these days. But the good news here is that the fundamentals underneath, in terms of the motor and the chassis, they do seem to be in a good place. Simple Energy claims that this will be the fastest electric scooter when it goes on sale, and the specifications certainly back that up. Their in-house developed motor produces similar power figures to the Ola S1 Pro, but it's the torque figure that is unrivaled in the e-scooter space. The company claims a segment leading 0 to 40 acceleration time and a top speed of 105 km per hour. Those figures are impressive, but what stood out to me is that the accelerator response in all four of the riding modes is smooth, predictable and easy to use. That being said, the top two modes did display a slight overrun where the scooter continues to accelerate for a fraction of a second after you close the accelerator. To Simple's credit, a smooth and predictable accelerator response is something that most EVs struggle with and this scooter is already much better than most EVs that we have tried. The company says that this mild overrun issue will be fixed by the time the scooters go into production. Now, even in the very limited space we had to ride today, this scooter was able to comfortably cross 80 kph in its top sonic mode. And from what I could tell, I think it's about as quick as an Ola S1 Pro in its hyper mode, maybe even quicker. That means that the simple one will probably be one of the fastest scooters in the country when it goes on sale. But this scooter's real trump card is its range. With a total battery size of 4.8 kWh, the Simple offers vastly more capacity than any other two-wheeler EV on sale today. But that's not the only tempting detail. Simple has also come up with a clever system where the battery capacity is split into a 3.3 kWh fixed battery under the floorboard and a 1.5 kWh removable battery that slots in under the seat. This will help address charging anxiety issues to some extent and it also means that the company can easily offer a cheaper version in the future without the removable battery pack. This is a really clever thing that Simple Energy has done and for many reasons. But there is one thing to consider. Because of the internal design of this 7 kilo battery pack, it doesn't have the same thermal management abilities as the main pack underneath. And that means that this pack can only power the scooter in eco mode. So that means that a significant amount of the overall range will have to be in eco mode, which limits the top speed to 45 kph. As for charge times, Simple says that this scooter will take about 4.5 hours to charge from zero to full. In an industry first, the company says that it will also sell an accessory fast charger that doubles the home charging speed and brings the charging time down to 2.5 hours. It is worth noting that the removable battery will only start charging once the main battery has charged up to about 80%. Here's what the overall charging times look like. So the performance is strong and Simple promises market-leading levels of range. But another thing that comes across as quite impressive in most areas is the chassis. This steel tubular chassis is also an in-house design by Simple and the company has done a good job with the brakes and suspension setup. The brakes are powerful but easy to modulate, although we did notice quite a bit of chassis flex at the steering headstock under hard braking. The company says that this will be fixed by the time the scooters go into production. That issue aside, the scooter handles well and it manages to do so while coming across as quite comfortable in the suspension department. 
This scooter currently wears 90 section tires at both ends, and the company says that the variant with fatter tires will only be offered at a later stage. As for the suspension, there were no bad roads for us to properly test it, but it's clear that Simple has gone for a nice, plush, and softly sprung setup. That softly sprung suspension reminds me of the TVS Entoc, and that's in a good way. Now, the Entoc manages to be a soft and comfortable scooter, but also a fun and enjoyable one when you want it. And the simple one seems to pull off that same trick. As for the seating position, the handlebar is just high enough for tall riders to manage, and it's definitely not as cramped as the Aether 450, but it's also not as spacious as the Ola S1 Pro. The 775mm seat height is good for short riders, but the shape of the seat could improve because it makes the rider slide forward and it doesn't leave much room for bigger folks. Simple says they are working on this. As for what's under that seat, the storage space isn't segment leading, but it is quite good nonetheless. The company's portable charger design isn't complete yet, so we can't show you how much space it will occupy in there. Those of you following the Simple One's journey for a while now will have noticed that this scooter looks a little different to the one that was launched in August last year. And that's because quite a few things have changed. And some of those changes are rather drastic. The changes made to the scooter in the last one year include new LED lights at the front and rear and some design changes to the bodywork. That alone is quite significant, but the company didn't stop there and they also made a 2 degree adjustment to the steering rake angle as well as modify the swing arm pivot angle. Those are serious changes to the chassis, but that's not all either. Last year, this scooter was running a chain drive system, but the company has now wisely moved to a belt drive, and that will prove to be quieter and lower on maintenance. In all of this, the scooter has gained 5 kilos, taking the total claimed weight to 115 kilos, which is still about 10 kgs lighter than the Ola. But it turns out that Simple still has more work planned for this scooter. For example, the belt drive that is currently exposed will be fully enclosed on the production scooters, and the company is also working on the motor regen functionality, which is almost completely turned off on our test scooters. Simple's smartphone app is not ready yet either, and the 7-inch TFT may have a slightly different layout with bigger icons for the ride modes when the scooter goes on sale. The display software itself is still in beta test mode, and a number of features like Bluetooth, cruise control, and even some basic touch functionality were not operational on our scooter. The battery charge indicator was also quite buggy, and it would sometimes jump back up to 100%. Another thing that needs to change, and quickly, is the level of quality and finish for the plastics all around. Now, I think that this is a really nice looking scooter. It has sharp lines, it looks fresh, and it has a great sense of proportion. But when you start to take in the finer details, that's when things start to look rather rough. The simple one certainly looks reminiscent of the Aether 450, which is no bad thing. Just like the Aether, this also has a premium looking side stand, a nice front number plate mount, and a beautiful aluminium swing arm. However, there is a lot of improvement that needs to happen in other areas. The body panels had rough and unfinished edges, there were large panel gaps in places, and some of the plastics were coming loose altogether. Simple's charging flap design looked unfinished and felt flimsy to use as well. It was also quite strange that the company did not want us to ride the scooter in the rain or even let it get wet. Now, some of these issues should stabilize once production begins, but clearly, there is a lot of work to be done here and seemingly not a lot of time. The company says that it wants to open test rides soon and it estimates that the first customer deliveries should begin by September or October. On the bright side, Simple says that despite massive supply challenges, it is holding on to its initial quoted price of 1.1 lakh rupees ex showroom after the Fame 2 subsidy, and that the first customers will get the scooter at that same price. That is a fantastic price for this level of promised performance and range. When it is ready, the Simple One will undercut its rivals for as long as the company can afford to sell it at that price. There is a lot going for the Simple One, and it's clear that this company is genuinely trying to address the issues of usability, range, and price. I also believe that the basic fundamentals mostly seem to be in place, but from what we've experienced today, it is clear that Simple still has a huge amount of work to do if it wants to address all of these issues before customers start getting their scooters. 
Then there's also the fact that this completely new company still has to prove its ability to manufacture at scale. As for me, I'm waiting until we can properly test the final version of this scooter that will go out to customers. That softly sung sprung. Sung suspension, okay? I'm going to drink some water. <laughs>